everybody, and welcome back to the warehouse, Jersey City, New Jersey. It is time right now for the Shady Rays post game show. Head on over to shadyrays.com. Use the code word warehouse. You will get 40% off your next pair of shades. We just bore witness to the end of the run for Forgotten Rock. Yeah. 5 1 losers to hook line sinkers. Pair of Drew Davis home runs. The difference in this one, Peter Moylan. It's a bit emotional, I'll be honest with you. We've seen Ploof in almost every level of every we have. He's won them both. And it's gonna be it's gonna be a little different not to see him in the championship game. He's gonna be humbled. I think he's gonna come back hungrier and ready to go. Blitzball four. A lot of people want to talk about the fall of a two time champion and a reigning league MVP. I I'd rather look at it from the other side of it. Fair things. enough. Hook, line, sinkers. They've got two guys that they throw out there. You know, usually a team will throw one of the two out there, and they're like, oh, gosh, yeah. can we get through the inning? That's not the way it is with this team. Kenobi has been very impressive. Drew Davis, obviously, he's come from a long line, a long line of blitz ballers, but Kenobio has really picked it up. Worked on two pitches. I would say perfected two-pitch mix from Dan Kenobio. You know what? Uh, both players were so good, they're going to split – uh, not a full split of the $100 of okay. booth money that we have right here. Let's go 80-20 since Davis also had the two homers. Is okay. that fair? Like that, yep. Uh, more importantly, Drew Davis is our Shady Rays player of the game, so don't forget, use the code word warehouse, get 40% off your next pair of shades. Also, you'll get early access to the John Boy Media and Shady Rays collab pairs dropping later this summer. Bang. Paxton Elrod with a pair of happy campers. Yeah, they're really happy down here, but they're also getting ready for next game. Drew, let's talk about this one you just played. Absolutely incredible showing out there on the mound. And also two home runs off of the reigning MVP. How does it feel to get that victory? It was. It felt good. Uh, again, we're just focused. We got another one. We got potentially two more, but uh, we're feeling good going into this next one, I think. I love that. By the way, you got uh, 80 bucks out of the 100. Oh, sick. Oh. That's, that's awesome. That's that's a whole meal. That's multiple meals for him. That's one meal in New York City. It's one meal. Yeah, it's one meal in New York City. Dan, you opened the pregame interview with a crystal ball, and you stated that you were going to win 6-2, but you were going to have four home runs. Didn't necessarily come out to be like that, but are you okay with the results even yeah, though you're wrong? So listen, I am. this is the Drew Davis show, and I'm just simply – uh, watching it all unfold. I'm contributing when I can and just watching Drew do his things. Two bombs, dominant on the mound. We live to see another day. Well, I'll let you guys go rest up and get ready for your next game. Back at the booth. All right, Paxton, thank you very much as we take a look at the Shady Rays postseason bracket. Hook line, now a date with We Got Ice. Three teams still alive. The winner of the We Got Ice and Hook Line game will square off against the college kids from the University of Missouri, Team Como, for the right to hoist the banner. Time right now to hear from the team that just lost, Forgotten Rotten. Guys, it's tough to come off of the loss, but is it difficult when you don't make it to the championship and you've been there twice before, gotten two titles? How are you feeling? I ain't never been there, but... Rod, I'm going to speak on it. Dan, you're part of this franchise, all right? I need you to remember that. Yes, I appreciate it. Here's the thing is, yes, have, has Rotten won the last two Blitzball battles? Yes. Um, are we a premier franchise in this league? Yes. Do we have some work to do? Yes. Now, that's fine. Dan and I right here, no strangers to hard work. Okay? So we got beat this tournament. So what? I'm sick of everyone writing us off already. I can see it in the comments. It, they're done. You know what? What are you talking about? Do you know who I am in this freaking league? MVP, two-time champ. I'm going back. I'm going to work. I'll be back here. Blitzball 4, look out. Whoever it is. Como, FOMO, DOMO, fucking hook line. I don't care. I'm back. So it's safe to say Forgotten Rotten is going to be back. What does the team look like? What does the future look like for you guys? It's a good question. I mean, it all kind of hinges on uh, Vinny and his run-in with the law. We have to see where he's at right now. Um, I've tried to reach him, but I haven't gotten anything back from him. Um, I love Dan. I, I hope that Dan can be a part of this franchise in the future. Vinny's my, my, my day one guy. I'd love to have Vinny back in here as well. So we'll see what happens. But Dan was exceptional. None of this is on Dan. I got beat. And I can admit that, but I'm going to be back. In that first inning, um, hook line goes up five to nothing. Trev, you threw all the bats into the field. You look like you gestured to the booth. 
is there some frustration there? It was, you know, not really towards Peter, more towards Chris, Chris right. Rose. Um, he just kept talking about my ERA, you know, what I'm trying to pitch, reminding me how bad I'd done this tournament. So I just was a little upset on that because I felt like, you know, you hold a microphone or they got like headsets. You don't have to talk that loudly. The mic picks it up. That's the whole point of a microphone. It <laughs> amplifies your voice. Chris Rose is out there, mic on the side, screaming, <laughs> so I can hear it. So I got a little frustrated there. I, I told him, I said, you know, we're flying home tonight. I'm not talking to him. And we do a show together, so I don't know how that's going to work out. Uh, anything else to say to the Forgotten Rotten fans out there? I'll let you guys down. Not going to happen again. Congrats to all the people that are still in the tournament because there's some good players, but... This is just a one tournament blip on the radar for a long franchise of victories and banners. And we'll be back. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Big Hi, win, Zach. guys. <laughs> Hi, Zach. Hi, how are you? Good. Uh, what's it like to not only win and move on, but eliminate the reigning champions of this tournament? I actually didn't even process that. I just looked at it as another game. We were still tunnel visioned in for one game at a time. Um, but yeah, it is nice to knock out uh, Rotten. Um, I know they had a target on their backs. Um, but this is the Drew Davis show. I said in the post game, this is the Drew Davis show, and I'm just simply in the audience watching it. Kids stud. Two homers? I was going to say, Drew, your pitching has been great this whole tournament, and your offense today was like was there, two yeah. home runs. How does that feel, especially off of Trev? It felt good. Um, I, the, thing I felt good the thing I felt the best about it was um, the second home run I hit was off a pitch that I, I haven't really hit that well this tournament. Um, like The other home run I hit off Trev was off a slider. second one was off a slider. So then the second one today um, was off his little riser, like rising fastball. And so it felt good to hit that one out because I feel I feel pretty locked in now for the rest of the day. Beautiful. After you guys get that early lead, is there any doubt in your mind that you're not going to win this game? No, we were going to win. We're going to win. Yeah. That's the thing. If we get any type of lead, whether it's one run, two run, five run lead with the arms, you know, we have yeah. what's what we are known for is pitching. That felt good because I feel like a lot of the games we've been battling like tooth and nail. Like yeah, one I think we've been down. Well, except for the first one, I well, mean, it was a one run really game. Close games and been down a lot. Yeah. Um, so to so. be up and, and to be able to figure out a pitching strategy, like let's, let's go with Drew yeah. uh, because next game, you know, I'm going to probably throw a few more. Yeah. So then we're going to get to the finals. Dan had a big out against Trev to end the first, which was huge. Yep. Um, yeah, I think like even after that home run Trev hit in the second inning, we were, we were just like, it's all good. It's one run. Right. Um, let's just keep – they can hit three more and it'll be fine. Yeah. So we just got to keep throwing strikes. Yep. Last thing, your next matchup is going to be against We Got Ice. Yeah. Um, how are you guys feeling – Health wise, how are your arms? Do you feel like you're going to be able to take it all the way to the end of this tournament? If yeah, you had my, to? Arm, my arm feels pretty good. Um, mm -hmm. Found a new pitch during warm ups. That's always fun. Uh, we got ice super tough. I know they want to get into the finals just like we do. Um, I have um, seen a lot of them, you know, with so many of these tournaments and just <laughs> working with them in all of our challenger series and everything. So I kind of know all their arsenals. Jack kind of has my number. So I'm going to have to figure out Jack. And Zoe's been awesome. Zoe's been lights out on the mound and at the plate. I mean, he's a two-way player. They're a good team. I mean, we have to beat a really good team to get to another really good team. Yeah. That's 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 yeah. what it is at this point. I think we just need to be efficient with our pitching and just, like, limit walks and not give up free bases and free runs. Because, mm -hmm. again, at the end of the day, if you walk someone, they hit a homer, that's two runs. It's just a solo. So um, we just like got to focus on throwing strikes. They hit one out. They hit one out, whatever. Get back to the plate and try and match it. Let's go. All right. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Appreciate it. Well, the guys from Hook, Line, Sinkers, very unassuming, very businesslike at this point. I'll tell you, if Drew Davis swings the bat like that against We Got Ice, not going to count him out. It's going to be really interesting because Trev has been one of the better pitcher pitchers in this league, and Jack Doyle has a lot of great stuff, too. So it'll be – I mean – we wonder if Drew is going to feel hot and keep rolling with that. In the meantime, uh, we have to say goodbye to the two-time defending champion, Forgotten Rotten. The wheels really came off in this tournament. Mm -hmm. They never really got it going. They needed a walk-off grand slam to win their lone regular season game. Uh, they did win a game in the playoffs against Pinstripe Strong, but here they just ran into a buzzsaw. And I think Trevor Plouffe is sitting here wondering, how do I get back to being Trevor Plouffe? I think, one, practicing, because a lot of these guys that he's going up against are playing blitzball, whether it's in this warehouse or across the country, every single week. And I think Trevor Pluth has made it this far just on strictly athletic ability, and uh -huh. now he's going up against people that 
actually work on that craft day in and day out. And so I think coming in for Blitzball Battle 4, he's going to have to really adjust that. Not only that, I think that uh, there was this awe when yes. Trevor Plouffe would either be on the mound or step into the batter's box as a guy who's got 106 lifetime homers in the show. Mm -hmm. They're like, my God, that's a major... I don't think the competition gives a shit at this point. No, no. We definitely saw that in the first matchup against Como and the second matchup against Como and truthfully, even Pinstripe Strong. And so I think we're going to see Trevor Plouffe come back as a different Blitzball player in the next tournament and maybe a few more humble classes after that. Well, uh, you know, not to turn this into a personal battle, but he did say that for some reason when I was telling his stats, which weren't beautiful during Blitzball Battle 3, he got upset because my voice tends to carry a little bit. Well, it's not your fault. That's his stats. Uh, listen, some fantastic athletes, i.e. Kevin Durant, have rabbit ears. No. I don't know if Ploof now has a burner account. I don't know if he's going to jump into my mentions. Maybe. I don't know if we have to have a breakfast when we return out west after this. Yeah, who knows? Um, and I'm not worried about the future of baseball today. That show, yeah. that community is going to be just fine. We're professionals. We'll deal with it. Yeah. But all I can tell you is this. The greats don't give a crap about what the media says. No. All I was doing was rattling off numbers, Bax. Did it's you tell me fault. if I'm wrong? It's not your fault. No, I mean, at the end of the day, it's his stats. You're just reading what's on the paper in front of you. I mean, if he's upset about that, he can throw his fit and not talk to you on the plane ride today. So, you know, what can you do? I've actually already changed my seat on our flight. Got it. That makes sense. I don't blame you. Next time we see you, it'll be hook, line, sinkers against We Got Ice for a berth in the championship game. Oh, it is so much fun. So for Paxton Elrod, Pete Moylan, and our amazing John Boy Media team, yeah, Mikey Nicey to show up today. Somebody forgot about daylight savings time. I am Chris Rose. Thanks for tuning in to the Shady Rays postgame show.